Hello, my name is Michael Miljanovic, and today I'm presenting Gidget ML, an adaptive serious game for enhancing first-year programming labs. This work was conducted at Ontario Tech University by myself and my co-author, Dr. Jeremy Bradbury. The problem that this work has to deal with is that introductory programming classes have students from a very diverse set of backgrounds and skills. Some students may have experience with programming before, while others may have never written their own computer program. Serious programming games that are designed to help these students are rarely customizable, usually involving a single set of levels that all players must go through. This means that there are problems when some of the players may be significantly higher or lower in their competence compared to the target audience of the game. Our solution to deal with this problem is to add automated adaptation to these existing games. This involves adapting gameplay tasks based on non-invasive player assessments. In our past work, we've developed a methodology for specifically adapting serious programming games, and we are using that methodology in this study. To assess the viability of our solution, given an existing programming game, we need to ask two questions. First, does the game itself benefit from any kind of adaptation? And second, is an adaptive version of that game effective at adapting to a learner's level of competency? The game that we selected for our study is Gidget by Michael Lee and Amy Ko. Gidget involves a robotic character navigating through a world where animals are being threatened by environmental hazards, and the goals of the game typically involve Gidget moving around and rescuing the animals and putting a stop to the environmental threat. In the center of the screen, you can see the visual environment where Gidget and the other characters navigate around the world. On the left side of the screen, you can see where the code is written that will dictate what behavior Gidget goes through as it is navigating the world. At the bottom left are the list of goals that need to be accomplished. So in this level, Gidget needs to move over to the puppy, and the initial code that's given is incorrect. All levels of Gidget include starter code that have at least some sort of mistake in them, and the goal of the game is for the players to fix that code through observing what happens when they run it initially and making changes. On the right side of the screen, we can see additional properties of Gidget, most importantly, the amount of energy that Gidget has. The energy is the number of steps that Gidget can take before a level is failed, meaning that players need to submit an efficient solution if they want to be successful. In our version of Gidget, called Gidget ML, we perform adaptation by collecting data from gameplay performance. To start off, some of the levels from the original Gidget are used as training tasks to collect data to initialize a player model. Once we have a model that has assessed the, the player's level of competency, we begin to adapt the task based on this model. Continuously, we measure their behavior by collecting more data about their task performance and use that to continuously update the player model. This performs a loop where each ta successive task is adapted until they've reached the end of the game. Some of our adaptations that we use in Gidget include modifying the amount of energy that a player has in order to complete a level, as well as changing the starter code that is present. In this example, you can see that those on the left in the low competence category are given more of the correct code than those on the right in the high competence category, where there are typos and other errors more that need to be fixed for the high competence group than those in the low competence group. In our experimental design, we split our study into two parts. First, having participants play through the original version of Gidget, which was only changed to allow additional logging data to be collected. And the second part of the study where Gidget ML, the adaptive version, was played. In the first study, players played through Gidget for two and a half hours and then were given demographics and game experience questionnaires about their performance. All of the data that was collected through this gameplay was then used to adapt Gidget ML. Participants in the second group played through this adaptive game, and as more participants took part, their data was continuously used to adapt for future participants. All participants also completed the demographics and game experience questionnaires at the end of the study. In our evaluation of Gidget ML, we had 100 undergraduate students enrolled in a first-year programming course at Ontario Tech. The average age of these students was 18 and a half years old, most of which were men, but this was due to the distribution of gender in the programming course from which we collected our participants. In terms of programming experience, we found that many students had never taken a previous programming course, and many others also had never written their own program before. Our study was run in the first week of the course laboratories across six distinct sections. In the first half of these sections, participants played through Gidget, and the second half had players going through Gidget ML. 
we look specifically at failure rate and energy usage as our measurable variables to determine adaptation for Gidget ML. We found that those who were playing Gidget significantly varied in their fa failure rate across levels of the game. Some participants may be very successful at one level while failing repeatedly at another one, and this was demonstrated in our data. We found that as we performed more adaptations and collected more data, this variance of failure rate decreased significantly over time, such to the point that by the time we had reached our final lab section, we had the lowest variance in failure rate among all of our participants. A similar trend was observed in energy usage among all participants. The Gidget group had significantly higher energy usage variance than those in the Gidget ML group, and as we collected more data, this variance decreased over time. In conclusion, we found that Gidget does have the potential to benefit from adaptation, as we said in our first research question. Learners had demonstrated a very high level of variance in both their failures and the efficiency of their solutions. Those who played Gidget ML showed significantly decreased variance. Variance that continued to decrease as more data was collected, and we used that decrease in variance as an indicator that Gidget ML can adapt to a player's level of competence. In our future work, we hope to apply that same adaptive methodology to other ser CS serious games, especially those that have a different style than Gidget, whereby instead of having players complete programming problems in order to solve a task, they may have to perform some other type of gameplay. We also considered looking at different data sources for adaptation, such as biometric data and eye tracking data, and we are considering looking at different strategies for adaptation. In our game, we performed adaptation between levels of the game. However, there may be better benefits when found um, using adaptation during these levels. Thank you for listening to this presentation.